Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 42. In this video, we learn a theorem. Every orthonormal set in a Hilbert space is contained in some complete orthonormal set. Further, every non-zero Hilbert space contains a complete orthonormal set. Contains a every orthonor every non-zero Hilbert space contains a complete orthonormal set. Let us prove this statement starting with introduction. Let capital H be a Hilbert space and capital S be an orthonormal capital S be an orthonormal subset orthonormal subset of capital H and define P define capital p be the class of collection class or collection of class or collection of all orthonormal sets all orthonormal sets all orthonormal sets containing containing capital s remember the definition capital p be the capital p be the class of or collection of all orthonormal sets which contains the set capital S. Obviously, obviously that P becomes partially ordered set. Then very clear P is partially ordered set, partially ordered set with respect to, with respect to set inclusion, with respect to set inclusion. Let us define one more set. Let capital T be any totally ordered any totally ordered subset of capital P. Capital T be any totally ordered subset of P. It means T subset to P. T subset to P. And the T is equals to set of all elements a lambda such that lambda belongs to the index set it means it consists finite number of sets now we shall show that now we shall show that union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is an upper bound is an upper bound for capital t upper bound for capital T in capital P. Our aim is to show that union of all such A lambdas where lambda belongs to index set. Index set means it consists of finite number of sets. Is an upper bound for T. Is an upper bound for T in capital P. Obviously, for every lambda we have, it is very trivial to observe that. It is very trivial to observe that A lambda is subset to union of a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set so it means we will we shall show that we shall show that we shall show that union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is in p our aim is to show that this union of a lambdas lies in capital p by definition of a lambda since each each a lambda contains s contains s what it means s entirely lies in a lambda entirely lies in a lambda it means this shows us union of a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is also contains is also contains s capital s is also contains capital s now it is remaining to show that now it remaining it remaining to show that it remaining to show that union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is an orthonormal set is an orthonormal set if it is an orthonormal set then obviously it lies in p if it is an orthonormal set then that union is entirely lies in capital p so our aim is to show that now the union of a lambda is an orthonormal set to prove this let us take two elements 
x, y belongs to union of a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set. Then there exist two sets a alpha and a beta belongs to capital T such that x belongs to a alpha comma y belongs to a beta because x comma y belongs to union a lambda means there must be two sets a alpha and a beta which belongs to the totally ordered set T satisfying that x belongs to a alpha and y belongs to a beta but by definition capital T is totally ordered capital T is totally ordered set we define T is totally ordered set therefore which implies as either either a alpha is subset to a beta or a beta is subset to a alpha <coughs> by the definition of totally ordered set either a alpha lies in a beta or a beta lies in a alpha so without loss of generality therefore now without loss of generality without loss of generality let us take let us take a alpha is subset to a beta if a alpha is subset to a beta then obviously the elements x and y the obviously the elements x and y both belongs to a beta both belongs to a beta x and y both belongs to a beta and we observe that a beta is an orthonormal set already it is an orthonormal set because capital t consists only orthonormal sets which contains capital s a beta is an orthonormal set and this x comma y x comma y are belongs to a beta by applying the definition of orthonormal set by applying the definition of orthonormal set these two vectors are perpendicular to each other x perpendicular to y and norm x is equals to 1 norm y also equivalent to 1 because of by definition of orthonormal set x must be perpendicular to y and they must be and they must be unit and they must be unit vectors norm x equal to 1 and norm y is equals to 1 this shows us you observe that x comma y belongs to union a alpha such that alpha belongs to index set and we show that this pair must be perpendicular and these two vectors are unit vectors norm x equal to 1 and norm y is equals to 1 by this proof i mean we take a pair of elements x comma y in this union and we prove that they are perpendicular and they are unit vectors this this shows us this shows us union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is an orthonormal set is an orthonormal set thus thus we conclude that the set union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is an orthonormal set orthonormal set containing containing capital s containing capital s and each a lambda is subset to union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set so right so this shows us this union a lambda such that lambda belongs to index set is an upper bound is an upper bound for t is an upper bound for t in capital p it is an upper bound for t in capital p this condition shows us this condition shows us p satisfies p satisfies all the conditions or all the properties all the properties of jones lemma of jones lemma p satisfies all the properties of jones lemma p is a partially ordered set and there is a totally ordered subset for p and there is a upper bound for that partially ordered set in capital p it means p satisfies all the properties and all the conditions of jones lemma by jones lemma 
there must exist by jones lemma there must be a maximal there must be a maximal element there must be a maximal element in capital p by jones lemma there must be a maximal element in capital p let it be capital m let it be capital m it means capital m is the maximal element in capital p capital m is the maximal element in capital p then capital m is a complete capital m is a complete orthonormal capital m is a complete orthonormal set containing capital s containing capital s for for if it is not so if it is not so then then there will exist there will exist an orthonormal set an orthonormal set containing capital s containing capital s and also and also containing capital m and also containing capital m properly suppose this is a condition one more condition for if it is not so it means there there is no if m is not a complete orthonormal set containing capital s then there must be there will exist an orthonormal set containing capital s and also containing capital m properly this is a contradiction this contradicts the maximality this contradicts this contradicts the maximality of capital m this contradicts the maximality of capital m so right this contradicts the maximality of capital m means so there must be a maximal element in capital p it means there is a complete orthonormal set containing capital s there is a complete orthonormal set that m is a complete orthonormal set containing capital s which is the first part of our theorem so for second part of the theorem for second part of the theorem let capital h be a non zero non zero hilbert space and let x be a non zero vector non zero vector in capital h then by previous theorem there must be a set capital s is equals to x such that norm x is equals to 1 is an orthonormal set is an orthonormal set in capital h then by first part of this theorem then by first part of this theorem there exists a complete a complete orthonormal set a complete orthonormal set in capital h containing capital s this completes the proof of our theorem hence proof observe that so we prove every min minor point of this theorem i repeat this one please observe that capital h b a hilbert space and s b an orthonormal subset of h define p be the collection of all orthonormal sets containing capital s what it means that p is a partially ordered set suppose it that p is a partially ordered set with respect to the set inclusion define capital t b any totally ordered set any totally ordered subset of p it means t subset to p so t is equals to set of all a lambdas where lambda belongs to index set now we shall show that union of a lambdas is an upper bound for t in capital p obviously it is ob clearly observable that 
a lambda is subset to union a lambda so we shall show that union a lambda lies in p since each a lambda contains capital s s is subset to a lambda so obviously union a lambda is also contains capital s it means s lies in this union also now it remaining to show that union a lambda is an orthonormal set to prove that union a lambda is an orthonormal set take two elements x comma y belongs to union a lambda x comma y belongs to union a lambda means there must be two sets a lambda a alpha and a beta in capital t such that x belongs to a alpha and y belongs to a beta capital t is a totally ordered set by the definition of totally ordered set either a alpha is subset to a beta or a beta is subset to a alpha without loss of generality let us take a alpha is subset to a beta then obviously x comma y belongs to a beta and a beta is an orthonormal set a beta is an orthonormal set by applying the definition of orthonormal set these two vectors x and y perpendicular to each other and they must be unit vectors so hence we show that two elements belongs to the union a lambda and the two elements satisfies the orthonormal conditions orthonormal properties so union a lambda is an orthonormal set thus union a lambda is an orthonormal set containing capital s and a lambda is subset to union a lambda hence we conclude that union a lambda is an upper bound for t in the set capital p it means p is a already p is a partially ordered set and it has a totally ordered subset such that it has an upper bound so p satisfies all the properties of jones lemma by applying the jones lemma there must be a maximal element there must be a maximal element in p let it be capital m it means m is the maximal element in capital p so m is a complete orthonormal set containing capital s for if suppose if the above condition is wrong it means m is not maximal then there will exist there will exist an orthonormal set containing capital s and also containing capital m properly it means this is a contradiction for the maximality of capital m so there must be a complete orthonormal set containing capital s this is the first part of the theorem for the second part of the theorem the second part is very simple h b a non non zero hilbert space and x is a non zero vector in capital h obviously it is very clear the set of all unit vectors is an orthonormal set in capital h by using the first part of the same theorem there must be a complete orthonormal set in capital h containing capital s that's it this completes the proof of the theorem